Hi everyone. Um, this talk will be in English because um, yeah, my German is a bit crappy and I do most of my talks all in uh, English. Uh, my name is Michele. Um, I work for Red Hat in uh, the support organization. And today uh, we'll talk a bit about performance compiler um, with the goal of this presentation uh, being that room knowing a bit what it is, what it does, what it's useful for, uh, what use cases make sense to use and where it's less suitable. So we'll talk a bit uh, about the architecture, um, uh, about how to install it, uh, and some, some usage patterns and some components of the framework that uh, you might find useful. Okay. Uh, who of you has ever heard of performance compiler? One guy, you get a beer after the talk, obviously. Excellent, <laughs> <laughs> uh, It's uh, a well-kept secret, uh, so it's, it's a very old project. It started at SGI, uh, Silicon Graphics, about 20 years ago. It started from IRIX. Um, the reason for this project to, to, to be started was that there wasn't, uh, there weren't tools to monitor the big IRIX machines that Altix boxes, the Silicon Graphics was producing at the time. That's how it started. Um, so, what is Performance Copilot in 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 a few words? <coughs> it's not a single tool that does monitoring collection or uh, that does a specific job. It's more to be seen as a framework uh, and a bunch of tools that do this job. So it has to be seen as a fairly complete framework for analysis. It can do collection, it can do monitoring, and you can use it to analyze the, uh, a system performance. It has a mm, distributed architecture, so it, from the start it's fully distributed, so you can have you have client-server relationship uh, between um, the main components. It provides full API uh, to do just about everything, to query metrics, to store metrics. Um, in these are the main languages supported now. Um, you can uh, analyze historical data with this API, also fetch it. Uh, it's very simple to extend um, and quite flexible in that um, you can extend it in C, in Python, in Perl. These three main languages today are the ones that uh, can be used to work with this framework. So, no one's, or very few of you, have heard of it. The, the next question you will have the heck uses this anyway? So it's actually used at a bunch of companies. These are the ones that uh, gave us permission to, uh, um, to, to go public with their uh, usage. So Netflix is probably the biggest user. Aconix is a big uh, IT shop in, in Australia. Um, the University of Buffalo uh, uses it uh, for their uh, HPC clusters. The XFS developers, the file system, not the X Windows font system, <coughs> use it for their performance, uh, multimedia company, and Red Hat has started using it. Um, we'll talk a bit about that in a little bit. So these are the ones that uh, use it today. Uh, the biggest user is Netflix. We'll see a bit what they, what they did with uh, what, what their usage of Performance Copilot is today. So we'll, we'll talk now a bit uh, about the architecture. Um, feel free to stop at any time with questions. Uh, no problem at all. Um, so what components are at play uh, with Performance Copilot? So this is the, the main daemon that, the, that does the collection of the data. It does not only do collection, it's basically um, the main 
service that you will see uh, on a system that uses performance compiler. It's a single service, uh, and we'll see um, that it has a bunch of uh, agents, they're really just plugins, um, that um, are in charge of collecting the data itself. So you will have a plugin for collecting network performance data for Linux, a plugin for a DB or whatever it is. These plugins are the ones that deliver the metrics. So a metric is a single defined um, aspect of a system that measures something. Um, PCP being a, a complete framework um, allows you to, to not really care about the gory details how you write a PMDA. Basically, you say, you know, these are the data, the metrics, the files that I need to fetch, and I will deliver these values to, to the clients asking me. Um, and then it'll be the API that decides, okay, this specific plugin will be DL opened in the process space of PMCD, so it'll be a shared object within uh, the process, which has certain advantages and certain disadvantages. Or if it will run as a daemon with maybe a different permission level, because PCP runs, the PMCD service runs uh, on a specific user in the system. So if uh, you have a plugin that needs data that is not available to this user, you will need to run it as root, and hence uh, the API will take care of it running it as a daemon with appropriate uh, permissions. Um, the other concept that um, comes to play with performance compiler is the performance metrics namespace, which is uh, it's just the namespace of the metrics. So we'll have a network, uh, it's just a tree where the leaves are the metrics. Uh, so we'll have a network namespace, we'll have UDP, leaves of this of this tree will be the metric itself. So network dot interface dot uh, incoming packets will have a value of zero, one, wherever, whatever the system has. We'll see a bit uh, a few examples. Then with those three you have clients. Clients are just um, applications that use the, the API, this the libraries that are provided by, by the protocol, by not the protocol, by performance compiler, the framework, uh, that speak to PMCD or um, directly work on files and do stuff. So they query for metrics, they ask what's the CPU usage of the system, what's the network interface usage, and so on. Um, there are a bunch of clients that uh, already shipped uh, with within performance copilot. Uh, we'll see a couple of those, what they do, what they can do. <coughs> so this is in, in one uh, in one single image is the is the architecture of um, of a typical uh, performance copilot uh, system. So you have the main service PMCD which runs on a specific system. And on the right side, uh, and you'll notice the dotted line represents, it could be a network, they can, the clients can be remote. You can speak to the daemon over the network or on the local host where you may stop it as well. Uh, you have a bunch uh, of applications on the right. They typically use one of the different interfaces that are, are provided or APIs that are provided by the framework. Um, so you have uh, PMVAL is just a CLI tool that, we, that you can use to query values, specific metrics, and it will just simply break them on screen. Not rocket science. Uh, PM chart is a GUI that will graph uh, the certain set of, of metrics that you asked. We'll, we'll show it in a little bit. Um, and on the left side, you have these PMDAs, are just really plugins, we can call them plugins as well, uh, that um, collect data on behalf of the clients. So the, the workflow is really client.
client asks the main service, which can be local or remote, um, for a specific metric. A PMCD knows which PMDA has uh, is in charge of specific metrics, and they get uh, they get returned back to the client task. So uh, one important uh, application or client that is shipped as part of uh, performance copilot is PM Logger. So PM Logger is uh, a service which uh, fetches metrics uh, and stores them in files. Okay, so you can later on look at historic data and see how it behaved, and you can go back in time and do some, some, some analysis of the data. So most tools uh, shipped by Performance Copilot can work on live data, so they query PMCD directly, or they can just be told to work on an archive and can do some uh, uh, thinking uh, about what happened, how the system behaved uh, back in time. So, uh, <clears throat> what data is available? Uh, there are a bunch of PMDAs. Uh, historically, it was born on IRIX, so historically there, there, were, there were PMDAs to collect data on those systems, and these keep evolving um, over time. Um, I would say uh, we're not there yet in terms of number of PMDAs compared to, to, uh, to other projects. For example, CollectD has, you mentioned 120 in the talk before, uh, we're definitely not in that range yet. It's one of the points we're, uh, we're working on. But we do cover, let's say, uh, a good amount of, of, uh, of existing stuff that is used today in, in your average systems. Um, also, it's, it's very flexible. Uh, first of all, writing a PMDA is completely trivial. It's, you can do it in Python in, in 20 lines, and you fetch data. Uh, or in Perl, and you also have uh, the, the possibility to use JSON, the specific uh, JSON PMDA, which will just fetch JSON data and create metrics uh, out of that. So um, it's really simple to install and, and, and to, um, to manage. So um, yeah, install PCP, same on RHEL, Fedora, and on Debian. Um, the star on Debian is because I'm not sure on which uh, release PCP made it in. I don't think it's in VT, but I think it's in the next one. It's definitely in, on unstable. Mm -hmm. I don't remember which version, but it's something <coughs> like that. Um, then if you want a web interface, uh, or um, then, have to install WebJS on Fedora. I don't think it's packaged yet for uh, Debian. Um, whereas if you want uh, a web API, so you want the metrics exported by Performance Copilot in some JSON format to query them over the network, uh, you just install a web API. Once you install them, uh, really that's all you have to do in most cases, so basically you enable the service if you're on a system B ser sys uh, system, otherwise you'll use uh, sysv script or whatever is available. Uh, the service you care about is PMCD, but if you want historical data, which typically is the use case, uh, you will also start PM logger. Yes, absolutely. So it has a fairly, uh, let's say, reasonable def default. So it collects metrics every uh, minute by default. And it collects, uh, let me say, a bunch of similar to system reasonable defaults. Uh, you can expand it. You can collect certain metrics more frequently than others. So you're fairly flexible in uh, how uh, how much data you want. Because one of the issues that you have with, with 
certain system is um, if you also want to collect uh, process data, uh, your your data your archives explode. If you want how much CPU each process consume, it's quite intensive. Um, with PM Logger, you can uh, with a specific PMDA, you can say I want this data, and for the processes named Java, I want more because if they explode in, in some metrics, I want to know. So once you install them, you, if you want to check the state of your system, uh, you just launch the command pcp, that will tell you if everything is running uh, properly and um, what PMDAs are active uh, for your system. So, as I mentioned, if you want a web interface, uh, just install those two packages. Uh, on Debian, right now, it's a little bit more work because uh, the, the web components uh, need to be uh, packaged a bit differently uh, in Debian. Uh, for the service that exports uh, the web interface, it's separate, it's called PM Web. Can I have a question? Yeah, sure. In, uh, Yes, yes. Uh, so, Performance Copilot made it in RHEL 6.6 and 7 onwards. Uh, so, I assume CentOS 6.6 from there it started. But I'd have to check to be honest. Um, okay, so we'll look at, at a few uh, clients. How do I interact with the service? What, what, do, what do I do with it? <coughs> so, the simple command to, to see a bit uh, what a metric does is pm info. It's a command. If I run it without anything, it will just print me all the metrics that the pmcd uh, is configured for. So it will be uh, a few hundreds depending on how many uh, of, of these pmdas are configured. But by default, it's a few hundreds on a, on a Linux box even more. Well, on my box it was 1,600 collected. So <clears throat> let's say I want to know a bit, because uh, one of the, mm, I would say, strength of, uh, strengths of uh, performance compiler is to, for each metric, there's an exact definition of, uh, um, of what unit it is in. Uh, so what, what is it measuring? There is a, a one-line description, and then there should be also a more extended description. What does this metric do? And this is a thing that I like uh, about performance compiler because very often in, in some monitoring systems, uh, you, you get you know network interface uh, bytes, and you don't know if it's if they measured it per second. Sometimes you, you're not exactly sure if it's unit has, is being used. And since this is included in the, in the framework, each metric has to know that there are no mistakes if you, if you think this is uh, one kilobyte or a thousand byte or, or that kind of stuff. Like there's no, you're not going to make mistakes in conversions or things like that. The, 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 the framework is fully aware of uh, what size it is, it's unsigned, uh, what kind of semantics it has, uh, and what unit. Um, we'll see a bit what Indom is. It's, um, we'll see it in a bit, I think I, I showed it somewhere. Oh, here, exactly. <coughs> so here I print the description, I print uh, unit, um, and for this specific metric, um, we also know units is byte and not kilobyte, so we know there is a difference in the, when I'll graph it, uh, the, the, the API does the conversion for me. In this case, we have a metric that actually applies to more than one um, object on the system. So we have incoming bytes um, and we have the network interfaces. So this metric has 
instances and one instance per object that is on the system that has this specific metric. Uh, so it's a very simple uh, concept and it's quite easy to, to understand right away uh, which interface uh, has a certain uh, measurement. What's nice is the the extended help that sometimes tells you a bit where was this metric fetched because it's not entirely easy. If you take two monitoring system, systems, take Sista and then another one, one says CPU is this and the other one says CPU uh, um, 90%, the other one says 95 at the exact time and you start wondering is, is it the same body, where is it taking start looking at the source code and whatnot, but it's, it's quite a bit of uh, work. So one thing that uh, I have not mentioned yet is that uh, PMDAs can actually receive commands or, or can have values set, uh, depending on the PMDA, they have to implement a specific method. Um, and you can use this too. So say you want to reset the counter to zero, PM store instead of reading a specific metric, you can say, no, I want to set it to zero now and set it back. Uh, some PMDAs uh, use it as, a, uh, as some, somehow a, a, an additional configuration system. So maybe they have a configuration file where you can say, I want to log all the Java processes and then you want to online without any restart whatsoever. You want to change that. You can use uh, PM store and you launch uh, you launch a command like that and basically you set a, a key value uh, into a PMDA which um, will, will act upon it. PM val is another CLI, just uh, another command. It does the exact same thing as PM info except it prints the value all the time, one or more. one or more metrics uh, of a system. There is um, um, a Qt GUI based on the Qt libraries uh, that can show you a bit uh, what's going on in the system. Um, we're going to work. A friend of mine told me this is, this is a distinct David Hasselhoff look. It's from the 80s. So we'll make it a bit shinier in the, in the future. Uh, it can work on, on, uh, on live systems and on archives, so you can replay a specific workload. Um, before I get to historical data, uh, there are a bunch of other uh, uh, utilities in performance compiler. There are a bunch of people that re-implemented the comments that you uh, are familiar with, like top, IO stat, and whatnot, using the, uh, the TCP API, which makes them distinctly smaller, because they have to do less, because most of it is taken care of by the framework, and they, you gain remote capability uh, out of the box. So, uh, once you decided to, uh, to collect some data. These are the steps. Uh, there's a folder, etc, etc, PM logger, uh, where you can tweak uh, collection interval, which metrics, how often, uh, things like that. And those will be stored in var log PCP and the name of the host, and there will be an archive uh, per day uh, by default. You can tweak all this by default. It it keeps uh, 14 days, but you can you can tweak this however you want. <coughs> so as I mentioned before, uh, most tools can uh, work online and on archive file. The, the option is dash A and the name of the archive file. So if I want to know, for example, here um, on that archive file from April 9th, from with a 20 minute interval, I want to see uh, that metric of how much free memory I had. Uh, that would be a column, it will print it out. 
there are a bit there are a bunch of options to make the output uh, usable and, and exportable in CSV so you can analyze it uh, in, in your familiar tools uh, another nice tool uh, that uh, I happen to use in, in my work when I'm trying to understand why a system is behaving differently uh, between Monday and, Monday and Tuesday is PMDIF, which used to be called uh, PM What the Fuck, but we, it was changed for <laughs> some reason. No reason, <laughs> no reason at all, exactly. Um, so, for example, here you can say, I want to know between those two archives. Uh, what metrics changed by a factor of 50. And you quickly see, okay, because usually these questions happen when, when you get an issue, someone tells you, system was fine yesterday, what did you do today, it's, it's, it's crappy. One way to very simply see what, what metrics changed by factor X is just to launch this, and you have a feeling, first three changed by a factor more than 50, the other ones were uh, zero in the second archives, and the last ones were zero in the first archives. So it's a quick way to, um, to have an idea about what, um, what's going on. So there are a bunch of other tools that are useful. Uh, PM log extract if you want to merge archives and, and, uh, or extract specific data sets from with a bigger interval. Sampling. Uh, if you want to uh, split archives and so on, you can use this one. Um, PM log summary gives you a nice overview of an archive. So it tells you, you can give it a few metrics. It tells you the average, max, minimum, standard deviation, and so on. Um, there are a, a, a bunch of, of utilities to uh, convert formats. So mainly to import to PCP, but we also managed to export to some uh, to, to graphite if you want. Uh, so we can import from IOSTAT output, AMRPG, Collectl, uh, SAR, and Gandia so far. I think our two split. Um, then you, have, you also have PCP to PDF. You just throw it in an archive. It gives you a nice PDF. Uh, with all the graphs for each metric uh, so that you can and you can also in this PDF you can mark specific times so if someone tells you at 12 that we had issues you just generate the report and mark 12 o'clock and it will put a nice um, dot on every graph and you can sort of start visualizing what's going on and maybe brainstorm uh, what's, um, what's happened to the system um, there's another, uh, that's not yet upstream, but uh, it will be very soon. Uh, you can take an archive uh, and import it in, in, who's familiar with Python and Pandas? Just a Panda one-liner. Uh, Pandas is basically um, a, a very popular module uh, in, 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 in the Python world to analyze uh, financial data. And it's, um, it's, it makes it very simple uh, to, um, to analyze your archives in, in, in great detail. Um, so basically, you just download that little module. It'll be upstream. Um, and you write 10 lines, and your archive is a big panda. Uh, it's just a matrix with all the metrics. It's not a cube, yeah, it's a cube, but in memory, like not, not uh, super high fantasy, but yeah, it's a big cube, and uh, the nice thing about pandas is that uh, you can use all their features, um, so you can do, correlate those columns to me, and it tells you the correlation between uh, the columns, so if you have a correlation of one on a, on a, on a network, between my outgoing physical and PPP0 will be very close to one and 
you can do a lot of that work uh, with this very easily. Uh, another service uh, that's shipped uh, with Performance Copilot is this uh, slightly spooky name. Uh, it's basically just a service where it has a language. You tell it, um, do this when these matrix behave in a certain way, and it will do, uh, and it will do something. So it's an engine. You give it rules. Uh, and then it can automate things. So, um, and it works live or in archives. It's very simple. It's shipped as part of PCP. Um, you can just say, okay, measure every second. If too many packets per second see 10, uh, execute this. Uh, it can become very complex. It's a full language. You can say, if uh, the disk I.O., take four disk I.O.s, if uh, the average of those is uh, above 10, X, Y, Z, whatever, then you can do an action. And you can do this both live and on archives. So you can decide, uh, uh, you can use this to, to um, yeah, take specific actions uh, in case of, different uh, metric situations. So it's quite complex in the sense that it's very powerful. I um, won't spend too much time uh, with it. Um, so performance copilot, we're sort of working more from the bottom and we're building uh, the bottom, the low level features first and then hopefully we'll uh, go up the stack more. Uh, one uh, more low level feature that uh, has been worked on lately is uh, metrics for containers. So, is a container going fast, slow? What's uh, what uh, kind of um, performance usage is a container uh, doing? Uh, the nice thing that it's not using, you don't need to install anything in the container. Uh, you simply tell it the name, and then you can know the name. There's a PMDA that will export those metrics container name and state running so you can see which one is running which not and then you can inspect um, a container network interfaces it has what values and so on so basically the um, the takeaway here is that uh, container support is included and requires no installation within the container um, So, uh, one of the uh, web interfaces that, uh, that are shipped uh, straight with, um, with Performance Copilot uh, is Grafana. So you tell it which metrics and it, um, uh, it uses Grafana to show you the, the, the graphs, how the metrics behave over time. Um, we even have a, a blink and lights backend. So you just specify the metric and the values you uh, want uh, have to be uh, the threshold and if it surpasses the value you can you can blink a lot uh, we export a JSON interface so it's quite simple to fetch the performance data on uh, embedded systems you don't need to port the whole PCP framework for for your Arduino This is the crappy latency I get in Italy. Um, so this is a project that's been announced um, quite recently. Um, it's by Netflix. It's this uh, web interface they use at Netflix to um, to inspect uh, uh, performance issues. Basically, they built this environment where they just give engineering or sysadmins, uh, they give them this tool to hop on a box or an archive or historical data and uh, look at uh, uh, issues. That's how it looks like. It's a dashboard um, and uh, it uses on the low level, it uses performance compiler. So all the APIs are Copilot are, are used. So Netflix.
physics didn't really have to uh, reinvent uh, the, the wheel and either you use, you can use this or that. They, they leverage uh, the framework um, that's, um, that's made available by the PCP. I think that's yeah, another project, I don't know if it's usually a bit more known those that have started using uh, Linux. This is a project that uh, aims to make uh, sysadmin tasks a bit easier so that you don't have to uh, know all too much to do the basic stuff, configure a disk and so on. And they also use uh, performance copilot to, uh, to fetch their uh, data to say, okay, system is, um, is using a lot of CPU, less So that was it. Um, the key takeaway, I think, uh, that I wanted to uh, communicate is that uh, it's uh, a very extended and extensive framework. Um, it's used today quite a lot by, by quite a few uh, companies. Do you have any questions? Interesting, boring? Sure, I'm, I'm not an expert on the other tools, so my view is completely screwed. Um, I, I think my impression so far has been the following that, uh, for example, Collecti has many more plugins. So if, if you need a truckload of, uh, of plugins and you have no intention whatsoever to touch any Python code and add them to PCP, um, at least for the collection phase, you're probably better off using Collecti. Um, Nagios, I think, does a different job, as, as Sebastian very well explained uh, this morning. Um, Moving, I've used it, I don't know how extensive it is these days. My last usage was six years ago, so I really don't count. Um, I think what's cool is that this framework uh, was started from day zero with a complete design for distributed and performance work. And you, you kind of see it because every single metric has a lot of detail attached to it. The concept of metric instances, uh, of units, uh, so you know if you're talking bytes or kilobytes or megabytes, because um, if you work on performance issues, these, that, that stuff is crucial. When you start, you know, someone sends you a, a Takti output or an RRD file and says, well, my network uh, was stomped and then you actually look in detail and you know you have to find out which metric is it using, what, what is it measuring effectively, because there's a huge difference is it bytes, is it kilobytes, what's going on and the framework is sort of mandates that this is taken care of did that answer your question somewhat? Yeah. I didn't tell you which one to use a little, I, I'm still a bit unclear as to why Nagios is different well Nagios is um, I would say Nagios is a is a monitoring uh, in the sense that it's a monitoring system in the sense that it, it was born to do to run checks on certain intervals and do something according to the to the results of these checks. And I think later on they sort of latched some let's add uh, Nagios what's called for PMP or PMP for Nagios. Yeah, PMP for Nagios. Let's also add performance because, as he said this morning, it's it's kind of dumb. Are you okay? Yeah, yeah. And then, so and then, if he's not okay, what do I do? How about you tell me your state, and then I'll decide. So, so just one of the major aspects that Nagus has and is, that is missing here, and also in tools like Moonin and uh, Colophy and stuff, where is that the logic component? Um, monitoring is not only about alerting, but also about actually handling alerts. So, for example, you want to handle um, escalations, and you want to say, okay, if I was alerted like five minutes ago. Now because it's still like in alerting state, so all these logics are available in like your monitoring systems, um, but missing from like the traditional um, performance related tools. Okay, thank you. Other questions? Yeah, I think you wanted to add um, what I find also very interesting about it is that uh, very PCP has very precise handle solutions. Yeah. So especially in the PCP, this is 
because you can you can really coordinate events on a, a half second level. Yes, so the, this is something. I the resolution we have is get time of day, so whatever the lowest the operating system has. Um, it depends then on the PMB input. So the, the code there is somehow slow, then it is a bit more. But latency is definitely something that uh, is, is a big aspect. And, um, and, and something else I want to ask, um, because I know about PM logger basically writing the value to file. Yeah. Um, what about um, writing to time series databases, like for archiving and for the um, archiving during all these other tools than GCP? I think right now we've worked a lot stuff into our archives. Uh, export, there are many ways to export to CSV and things like that. I'd have to check. I, I haven't seen much going on in the export to Redis or whatever these days. But the thing is, it'd be completely trivial because the API is, is, is very, it's quite well documented. You can tell it's an old project because the amount of pages are fantastic. <laughs> <laughs> the amount of pages have everything. And the website is a little bit that's how you tell it's an old project. That's probably why it's also less known, I think. Mm -hmm. They fixed the website a bit recently. Before it was just, they didn't hassle of life. <laughs> did you mention that it supports export to RD? Uh, I think it was, in, it might, maybe, no, it does. Oh, I, it I have to check. I thought okay. it was import, but uh, I can check that. It's, uh, I haven't played much with that, but the API is super, it's super easy. Um, that PCP to PDF thing, since I work in support, I, I get a lot of performance cases. And they start all very vague. It's very hard to pinpoint the customer what's wrong. They'll, they all start, it's slow. And you don't know what, and you don't know if it was fast before, or what did they do, and things like that. So back in the days, uh, since by default, all REL systems have sysstats, uh, I, I wrote a, a tool called SARSTATS that would convert this, the, the SAR output in a PDF and, and then I could go, okay, wait, this changed here and, and I could brainstorm a bit what could have happened. And this was, I don't know how many lines, and I rewrote this for PCP archives and it's a fraction because I don't need to care about metrics, I don't need to care about the, it's just a bit of logic. Examples mentioned that is like network dot interfaces dot git dot something, but then there's also like um, I don't recall what it is called, like those sub elements like dash interface names. So we have a that exported and like we have a PMNS, so a tree <coughs> where we define uh, uh, the naming. Mm -hmm. uh, basically, right now, um, if you have if you are an external PMDA, you can do whatever you want as long as you don't clash. Existing one, uh, we encourage everyone though to contribute, and we keep a single. We try to keep a single, uh, single tree. Uh, if let's say it's reasonable now, it's in the sense that if interface counters are under network. Are you, are you aware of metrics zero dot uh, two dot zero? It's like no, 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 no. a project trying to document how to specify um, naming of. Metrics and the basic idea is that uh, so they're the same PW pairs to identify what the metric is and where it comes from. Oh, okay. So we have like up to have an idea of how to map your current naming scheme to like a list of PW pairs. I'd have to check more in detail what, uh, what this, how the system looks like. So metrics uh, 2.0 is like just a document explaining how the naming should look like. Um, okay. Translate what you currently have into like a list of PW pairs. Do you have like just continuously an idea of how you do that? Well, what, what should be in the value? The key, okay, is the metric name. What um, is this another so standardized name that you're? No, I don't think it's standardized. So I guess the question is what are the meanings of your <coughs> main elements that you currently have? Like, for example, I guess network dot something all relates to the PMD. Oh no, not necessarily. Not 
necessarily. So the name is not, it usually is, but it doesn't have to be. Okay. So you can create PMBA foo and export metric network dot whatever. So you're fully flexible in that. Um, is your concern that someone writes a PMBA and overwrites your, your, the ones you created? No, so I'm just trying to figure order. around how to like export the data you have into a different system or import stuff from a different system to... Um, okay. And well, then of course, then we'd have to do some name translation, and that means we have to put some meaning into like elements of your name. Yeah. Like for example, in Quality, there's like usually a five tuple that like describes the plugin name, the plugin instance, a host name, and a type name, and a tag instance. And for example, a plugin instance for the network pro uh, network plugin instance would be the name of. like a very strict naming scheme and, and like each element of the name um, has a very specific name. Um, you can fetch from an archive, you can fetch uh, all the metadata attached to a, met to a metric. Mm -hmm. uh, if then you want to convert it to a, another system, we'd have to see uh, if the end metric is one to one, if it would need some changes, yeah. some conversions. Uh, I would say so from a gut feeling, it's doable. Thank you. But, thank you. But uh, maybe we can chat a bit. Yeah, I owe you a beer anyway. <laughs> thank you.